Hello everyone, welcome to Cookies Enabled, I am Will, and in today's episode we are talking about something very real and very scary, which is water use. Yes, I'm talking about Lake Mead and Lake Powell that are drying up faster than they can add water to them, and what does that mean for you and me? Not good. Stick around and let's learn something new together. Okay, Lake Mead and Lake Powell both are man-made lakes and or reservoirs, if you want to refer to them as that, you can. Uh, and they help feed water to about 25 million people in Arizona, Nevada, California, and Mexico. Uh, the water also generates electricity for 1.3 million people. Yowza. Uh, <laughs> Lake Mead and Lake Powell are both fed by the Colorado River, which is normally filled by melting snow from the southern Rocky Mountains. Back in 1983, Lake Mead's waterline was at 1,226 feet, and that is considered its high record. And now the uh, level is at 1,044.6 feet, and that is 184.34 feet of missing water. That's below the full line. That means you could put a whole leaning tower of Pisa where all that missing water used to be. That's a lot of missing water. So uh, if the water falls below 950 feet, the Hoover Dam will no longer be able to supply power and it's currently only running at about 60% capacity because of the low water line. And Lake Mead is only about 30, 35% full at best. Now, Lake Mead today only has one of its six boat launches still open, and that will probably be closed probably by the time I'm posting this video. And one in three water intake pipes are also open. Uh, the third is actually the newest pipe, and it's the only one still running, and that one is still supplying water to um, Nevada as well as California and a little bit to Mexico um, as well as to the Hoover Dam. So that one is really particularly important. So what caused all this really low water to happen? What is going on here? Stick around. I'm going to explain all that here in just a second. So where did this all begin? In 1983, Lake Mead was at its highest point, And the idea of expanding, starting, or growing your family, company, or industry in either Arizona, California, or Nevada were just some of the best ideas that anybody could have at the time. So that was a huge drive for not just population, but expansion in that area. And then in the late 80s, early 90s, we started this really bad drought, uh, especially in the Arizona and Nevada areas, which then spread all the way through uh, to all the remaining areas that I've been mentioning, including Colorado, uh, to some extent. Um, but that drought has now been labeled a mega drought because it's been lasted for almost four decades. We're getting real close. Um, so this drought has been mainly blamed on climate change, especially in the areas of that country due to uh, higher temperatures, less than average rain and snowfall in the winter months, as well as uh, fewer water restrictions in the past years on industries and agricultural that draw from the Colorado River. This all led to Lake Powell and Lake Mead seeing a reduction over those last few decades. So Lake Mead is now only at 30% capacity, uh, which again, back in 1983, that's what they're comparing it to here. Um, and if the lake falls below the 950 feet mark uh, or 100 more feet to go, then the Hoover Dam will no longer be able to generate any electricity at all. And that's because the turbines inside the dam will not have enough pressure against them. So this can damage the turbines as well as the whole structure of the dam itself. So they pretty much have to turn off the turbines and just let the water pass through. But the water pressure on the other side of the dam is so low, it's not enough pressure to push those turbines. So huge problem, huge problem. So the combination of regional demand for water, drought, climate change, and misuse of water has all led to this point. As well as the extremely high temperatures in that area 
way higher for the region. Uh, less clouds and more forest fires all means higher water evaporation rates. And that means it's coming straight off the top of the lake, right into the air. It's not even being used at all by any plants or companies or anything. It's just poof, right into the air because it's just so hot and there's so much direct sunlight. So that's a huge problem. Plus, when you're getting less rain and less snow in the mountains, that means less flow into the lakes overall. And so the only way to make up for a higher evaporation and higher temperatures would be more rain and more snow, which is obviously not happening uh, in that part of the mountains anyway, and it's not helping with the upper basin. So um, our friends over at Sin City Outdoors and their YouTube channel really are keeping a great track of the level of Lake Mead. They have been going out about every week to two weeks or so, not only checking the levels uh, levels of the, the lake, but showing different parts of the lake and what's going on out there. So give them a little look-see and uh, definitely uh, it'll blow your mind at how low uh, and how quickly the water is receding out there. So how can we fix these problems and where do we go from here? Stick around and I'll explain all that in just a minute. So how do we fix these problems? Well, uh, several states including Arizona, Colorado, Utah, and Nevada have all signed a new treaty program which has been incentivized uh, and allowing companies to uh, instead of using water from the river, we'll use water from their aqueducts or wastewater if they can. Um, and this will allow more water to flow from the Colorado River, hopefully, anyway, to Lake Powell and Lake Mead. Uh, and that's the whole idea. Now, again, these have been uh, incentivized for several years, and most companies have still found ways around them. Uh, and they're very easy to avoid, unfortunately. Now, water being pumped from Lake Powell has also been slowed to a new all-time low and that's in, in an attempt to keep its level at a thousand feet or higher and that's also to help keep the Hoover Dam in operation. So some have suggested that foam covers or plastic balls could be released on top of Lake Mead or Lake Powell to help with the evaporation aspect of it by covering the surface area with, with reflective uh, foam sheets or uh, these circular balls that they have that can reflect the sunlight. Uh, this will prevent a huge amount of evaporation uh, which is happening on a daily basis out there because of the high temperatures and lack of clouds. Drills also could be used to access local aquifers and draw water from underground in local areas around Lake Mead and Lake Powell and then pump that water into the lake to help keep the levels a little higher. The problem with this is that the ground sediment out there is like harder than concrete. It's lava rock and it's impossible to drill through in some areas. So this would be extremely hard to do and extremely costly effective and most people would not or most companies would not want to jump on that as an option. Some states could also incentivize desalination processes for agricultural use or other commercial uses if it's going into medications or uh, foods for maybe animals and livestock that food doesn't necessarily have to have 100 percent aquifered water it can have desalinated water from the ocean and some of these states could have been doing this for decades but have been waiting around for a time to do it maybe it's that time everybody so we will see some of these cities also don't do any kind of rainwater or stormwater collection and or dehumidifier collectors which pull water directly from the air and pump it right into the local aquifers and uh, better wastewater treatment facilities in these cities could also be regurgitating almost all the wasted water right back into the local aquifers with very little waste. Now to stop the endless waste uh, like waters that you see in fountains and in artificial rivers and lakes that you see in Vegas uh, or in people's backyards and pools and ponds that definitely has to end especially in these drought ridden regions where you just cannot afford to have pools of water evaporating away just because it looks pretty I know it's awesome but it just isn't logical anymore and we just have to be a little smarter than that everybody I know it looks cool, but there's other ways you can build a facade other than fountains and fake rivers. It's just not necessary, especially in the middle of the desert. I don't know. All of these things could definitely help restore Lake Mead, Lake Powell, 
and the Colorado River back to their former glory before they're completely gone and we won't have the ability to restore them back to anything. Okay, everybody, is Lake Mead and Lake Powell going to dry up anytime soon? Eh, maybe. We will see. Hopefully our uh, community members will jump on these different ideas and prevent these lakes and rivers from drying up completely, and they will remain a American monument for some time in the future. But thank you all for tuning in today, and thank you for making it to the end of the episode. If you liked this episode and you want to watch more, we're on YouTube, obviously. We're also on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Reddit. So check us out on those social media posts as well. But thank you all again. We'll see you all next time. I know I learned something new. Hope you guys did too. Take it easy, everybody. Okay, this is a test. The neighbors were just making a f noise out there, so uh, they just turned a lot of the music off. So let's see how this sounds. Hey, everybody, welcome to Cookies Enabled. Water line. Uh, okay, everybody, I hope we all learned something new today. I know I definitely did, and I already screwed that up. <laughs> Well, thanks for tuning in today, everybody. I know I learned something new. Definitely thought, uh, wow, how do, why do I keep screwing this up so bad? An option. So some states couldn't incentivize, incent, uh, and before you know it, every all of these would just be a, a complete mess. I am screwing this up so bad. Up faster than we can add water to them. Can you hear those crazy people outside? These are my neighbors. OMG. Love them. Let me try that intro again. <laughs>